possible. God is watching me. God is. What a wonderful song. What a wonderful selection. Um, God is so real. But God is wonderful. God is perfect. He makes everything works out for us. Um, my sermonic text is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And I'll be reading from the King James Version the original King James Version. I don't usually do this, but it just captures my sermonic text in a perfect way. Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, and it reads, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is all that and then some. Today's message title, He Is, He Is. Dear Lord in heaven, we are just so thankful for your grace and thankful for your mercies. We ask that your name be glorified and be lifted up throughout the earth. In the blessed name of Jesus, hide me behind the shadows of the cross. Amen. Amen. Just say it with me. He is. He is. Henry J. Hines first business enterprise was a failure and he was bankrupt. Legally, Hines was not required to pay back those debts, but he was determined to preserve the value of his name. And so he repaid every penny. His next attempt to start a business was a success and ultimately became known as H.J. Hines and Company, or H.J. Hines Company. Although Henry J. Hines died in 1919, 
The company he founded is still the beneficiary of his good name. Whenever we think of ketchup, mustard, relish, and any other condiments, we think of Heinz. Yes, we do. There have been many other individuals whose names have become brands, like Kellogg, Aston Martin, William Henry Hoover, Jordan, David and Hewitt Packard, and of course, Oprah. Their brand captured a significant attribute of their character, such as dedicated, hardworking, business suave, business IQ, creative, charitable, and brilliant. However, the most glorious and meaningful of all names is unquestionably the name of Jesus. Jesus' name is recognizable and there are distinctive characteristics linked to his name. Isaiah the prophet lists five qualities attached to Jesus' name. These attributes distribute or describe his character and his work. Jesus is called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Today, brothers and sisters, I would like us to examine the meaning and significance of each of these individually. He is wonderful. He will be called wonderful, Isaiah 9, chapter 6 tells us. The Hebrew and Greek definition of the word wonderful is pala. It comes from the root word for miracles. King James translates the word as marvelous, wonder, and wonderful. It is something extraordinary. Jesus was indeed extraordinary because he lives. In his earthly ministry, Jesus left a, a, a plethora of, of miracles. Everywhere he went, he performed a miracle. Everywhere his feet touched or land in that location, people came to him and he blessed and restored and performed miracles. People were amazed at his power. They were in awe. There was a spirit of wonder permeating their reactions as they witnessed the power displayed by the incarnated Son of God. Indeed, it was predicted hundreds and hundreds of years before he was even born that he would be called full of wonder. He would be wonderful. Can anyone testify about how wonderful God is? How wonderful he is? Oh, I'm sure someone can testify because there have been times in your life when you didn't know when your next meal was coming from, but God provided. God is. There are times in your life when you couldn't make ends meet and you didn't know how you were going to cover your mortgage or, or that car note, but God is. He is a provider, but God, he made it happen. You may not even know it or understand it. You may not even acknowledge that he is the one. You didn't know how that got done. It got done because God is wonderful. He is wonderful. In fact, one of my favorite authors, Ellen G. White, shares her testimony in a moment. She says, I stood before Jesus 
there was no mistaking that beautiful countenance. Such a radiant, radiant expression of benevolence and majesty could belong to no one else. As he gazed, as his gaze rested upon me, I knew at once that he was acquainted with every circumstance of my life and all my inner parts and feelings. The sound of his sweet voice thrilled my heart with a happiness it had never before experienced. I was too joyful to utter a word. I was overcome with indescribable happiness. I sang prostrate at his feet. His smile filled my soul with gladness. His presence filling me with a holy reverence and inexpressible love. Oh, brothers and sisters, I declare to you, God is wonderful. I declare to you that no matter what you go through, you cannot help but pause and realize that he is wonderful because he took our place and died to save the guilty race because he stooped to bear the shame forever wonderful is his name hallelujah god is wonderful he is wonderful he is counselor the prophetic title of the messiah who we know now as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is counselor. Christ is a counselor to us, with us. We can consult with him and he counsels and advises us on our life's journey. He makes clear the path of peace and righteous living and he makes clear the way to eternal life. He counsels us. Oh, when we are desiring inner peace, Jesus tells us in John 14, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives you. I don't give and take back, in other words. My peace I give to you. So do not let your heart be troubled, nor be afraid. Even when we are troubled and in a state of restless uh, uh, agitation because of unproductive choices or negative cycles, Romans 8 tells us there is now no condemnation for those who can and for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the spirit who gives life has set you free. Brothers and sisters, if he sets you free, you shall be free indeed, free from your sins, free from death, free from, free, free from uh, your addiction, free from, from the things that is burdening you and holding you down. When Jesus sets you free, you can leave all your burdens at the throne of the cross and you shall be free and free indeed. He is a counselor. He counsels us when we are anxious. He counsels us. In fact, David encourages us in Psalms 121 to lift up our eyes to the mountains. That's where our help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. No, he won't. He who watches over you will never slumber. He counsels us when we are discouraged. Uh, he counsels us when we are overwhelmed with sorrow. He counsels us when we are drawn into temptation. He counsels us and provides for us because Jesus is a counselor. Jesus invites us to act for his counsel. He sees that we pour our troubles into human ears and, and we're telling others about our struggles uh, and we're 
confiding in people and others that cannot fully help us. But we neglect to confide, confide all to Jesus, who is able to bring hope, he is able to bring joy, he is able to bring peace in the midst of our sorrow. He is able to comfort us and relieve us in the midst of our heartaches. God is a counselor. He is our counselor because he bids me come and ask for guidance in my daily task. He is our counselor and in him alone are all wisdom found. So be his name with honor crown. He's also, brothers and sisters, he is the mighty God. The resurrection is undoubtedly the most significant proof that Jesus is mighty God. The resurrection functions as proof of his power and undenying, undenying leader, undenying father. Because his power is demonstrated and is seen because he had the power to lay down his life and he had the power to take it up again. As mighty God, Jesus rose from the dead and now sits at the right hand of God. He sits high above every other authority, high above every power, high above every other leader, all and high above Jesus reigns as king. In fact, the psalmist asks the question, who is the king of glory? And the answer comes back with a resounding, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord God. He is the king of glory. He is the mighty God. His power is on full display in the nature of the star-studded heavens. His power also is mighty, the mightily demonstrated in humans' lives, which has been seen change, transform through his unconditional love and amazing grace. I knew life. I knew a life that was lost, bound by the things of earth. But I know a name, a precious name, that bought that soul new birth. He is a mighty God. Because though he was bare in lowly guise, he came from far beyond the skies to all the world, the titan tells. He is blessed, Emmanuel. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. He is the everlasting father. If mighty God was amazing, brothers and sisters, this attribute, of the everlasting father is so much more. The Hebrew phrase translated everlasting father could be translated literally father of eternity. For this reason, some have suggested that the title means that the coming Messiah is also the creator of everything. He is the father of time and eternity the architect of the ages. While we know this to be true from the New Testament, and we can find that in, in John 1 and Colossians chapter 1, we know this to be true in the New Testament. That is not, that is not the emphasis of Isaiah. In the Hebrew construction of the phrase, Father is the noun. And everlasting or eternal is the term that describes his fatherhood. His, he is father forever. 
In ancient times, the father of the nation was viewed in much the same way as the father of a family. It was the father who was to protect and provide for this for his children. Jesus protects and provides for us. And his role as protector and provider will not be limited by aging or death. Oh, no, 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 no. No, absolutely not. Because he is the everlasting father. He is the everlasting father because he lived a life below that mighty, that people might his father know. He is the everlasting father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace because he is our peace offering. Someone had to be sacrificed and it was Christ. He chose to go to the cross and offer himself as a sacrifice on the cross for our sins so that we could have peace with God. He mended our broken relationship with God and surpassed any good work we could ever do, including giving a peace offering. There is no other way for, to, to have peace with God except through Jesus Christ. The mission of Christ was to bring peace to the world. The death and resurrection of Jesus was always the plan. God longed to transform our chaotic, hateful world into a world filled with his peace and love. And referring to Jesus as the Prince of Peace spoke to his mission. He would be the one to finally bring peace to the world. Apart from him, brothers and sisters, there is no peace. This truth goes without saying. Prior to Jesus, the world was far from peaceful. And while we do not have perfect peace yet, in terms of our world, we do have hope. Isaiah speaks of Jesus' ever-increasing kingdom. Because the truth is that his kingdom is always growing and expanding. The love of Jesus and his peace are spreading throughout the entire world. Jesus, the light of the world, is reaching all places. It reaches all places. Jesus, the light of the world, is reaching every corner of the globe. He is Prince of Peace, because as the shepherds heard, he is goodwill to all. This blessed word proclaimed in an angel, in an angel chorus will be proclaimed the world around till he has king is crowned. Then all the earth wars and strives shall cease. Then the world shall know him, Prince of Peace. Brothers and sisters, I came by to briefly drop in and give you a brief reminder. Just a moment or two to spend with you, to deposit important reminders in your memory bank. And today I deposited the truth that Jesus Christ is not just Mary's baby. He is the crucified and risen Savior. And he is also wonderful. He is counselor. He is the mighty God. He is your everlasting father. He is your prince of peace. And no matter the struggles you may experience in your life, Hold on to those attributes of Jesus. Hold on to those attributes because it is critical for us to know and recognize the different characteristics that Jesus brings to us. 
because these applications of Jesus are expected to be renewed in, in your heart. These applications and attributes of Jesus are expected to be displayed in your day-to-day -day life. These attributes of Jesus are needed for us to transcend from this earth to the earth to come. So brothers and sisters, stay faith faithful. Remember, our Lord and Savior is wonderful. He is your counselor. He is the mighty God. He is your everlasting Father. And He is your Prince of Peace. And so dear Lord, we thank you for being a blessing in our lives. We thank you for being all the characteristics, characteristics embodied in today's message. May we demonstrate that and reflect that in our lives to those we encounter and those we interact with. May we always lift up your name and give you praise and glory. Amen and amen.